Greetings everybody and today we're going to be using complex analysis to evaluate this trigonometric integral. So that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 1 plus the sine squared of x. So as I said before we're going to be using complex analysis so it would be nice if we can turn this sine into its complex exponential form somehow. So recall that the sine of x we can write this in terms of exponential functions or complex exponential functions and that's e to the i x minus e to the minus i x and this is divided through by 2i. So let's plug this exact form for sine of x into this integral and let's see what we can come up with. So that's now the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 1 plus. Now we have the sine squared of x and that's basically this whole fraction but squared. So e to the i x minus e to the minus i x divided by 2i but the whole thing squared and integrate with respect to x. Next, what I want to do is I want to distribute this squared into the numerator and the denominator. So notice on the numerator, we can just keep it as it is, but on the denominator, if, if we have 2i but squared, well, 2 squared is 4, i squared is minus 1, so we're going to have minus 4 on the denominator. So if we carry out the operation, we're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 1 plus e to the i x minus e to the minus i x but the whole thing squared and this is divided by minus 4 and this is integrated with respect to x. Next what I want to do is I want to get rid of this minus 4 on the denominator because it is a bit ugly having fractions inside of fractions and the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by minus 4. So doing that, we're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Multiplying the top by minus 4, we're going to get, well, minus 4. And multiplying the denominator by minus 4, well, multiplying minus 4 into this one, that's minus 4. And then minus 4 will cancel out with this other minus 4 on the denominator, leaving us with e to the i x minus e to the minus i x, but the whole thing squared, and this is integrated with respect to x. Alright, so we have simplified things from here quite a bit and now what I want to do is I want to expand out this binomial term over here and that's quite easy to do, we just need to use a binomial theorem so that's now the integral from 0 to 2 pi of minus 4 divided by minus 4 plus and now applying the binomial theorem to this we have the first term but the whole thing squared so e to the i x squared is exactly e to the 2ix and then for the second part we have a 2 times the first term minus or 2 times the first term times the second term so we have a plus a 2 times these two things multiplied together we have a minus so this should be a minus actually and e to the ix times e to the minus ix that's just 1 so we can just leave it as it is and for the third part we have the e to the minus ix squared that's exactly e to the minus 2ix and this is integrated with respect to x. Alright so now we can simplify things a little bit more if we want to. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of minus 4 divided by I'm going to put this exponential term first so e to the 2ix minus 6 plus e to the minus 2ix dx. And one last thing I want to do, I'm going to bring us back all the way up over here, just so we have a bit more space later on. What I want to do now, I want to get rid of this minus power, and the way we're going to do that is by multiplying the top and the bottom by e to the 2ix. So if we do that, remember everything up until here is still equal to our original integral. This is going to give us the integral from 0 to 2 pi of minus 4 divided by. Now if we have... If we multiply the top and the bottom by e to the 2ix, we're going to get e to the 2ix up here. And e to the 2ix times itself is going to give us e to the 4ix. And then a minus 6 times e to the 2ix, that's minus 6 times e to the 2ix. And then over here, it's going to cancel out. So we're just going to be left with a plus a 1. And this is integrated with respect to x still. Alright, so now we have our integral in this form, and notice we have a bunch of 
e to the i x's everywhere and that just calls for a substitution and the specific substitution we're going to be making is we're going to be letting some new variables z be equal to e to the 2 i x because notice if we have e to the 2 i x then these kinds of reduce down to a single um, variable or we can just turn these into z's and this e to the 4 i x that just becomes a z squared which is quite nice all right so if z is equal to e to the 2 ix, we can deduce the value of dz. So dz, we can just differentiate both sides. Differentiating the right side, we're going to get 2i e to the 2 ix. So just some basic chain rule there. And now you want to kind of match things up a little bit with what we have already in this integral. Notice in this integral, we have a dx and e to the 2 ix. That's similar to what we have over here. We're just missing this 2i. It would be nice if we can get a 2i here somehow. So let's rewrite this integral a little bit as being the integral from a zero to two pi. And I'm going to split this minus four into minus two times two. And we're gonna bring that minus two out to the front. Um, actually, I'll write it a little bit higher. We'll see why later. So minus two at the front. And on the inside, on the integrand, we're going to be left with two times e to the two i x divided by, I guess we can write this e to the 4ix as being e to the 2ix, but the whole thing squared, minus six times e to the 2ix plus a one, and we have our dx still. So we have our two, so we've gotten our two, and now we're just missing our i. So let's multiply an i in, but we can't just multiply an i, we also have to divide by an i, and we're going to divide at the front. So notice we just did one cool thing. This whole thing that we've generated on the numerator, that's exactly what we have over here, and that's exactly our dz. So now we have a minus two over i integral, and we'll worry about what the bounds are later on. But over here on the numerator, we're going to be left with a dz, and this is divided by now e to the 2ax, that's going to be z. So we have z squared and then a minus 6z plus one. All right, so we've more or less done our substitution. Let's figure out what the bounds will be. So if we look at z being equal to e to the 2ix and our original interval, so x is on the interval zero to two pi, what exactly is e to the 2ix? Well, that's just going to map out some circle in the complex plane. So if we're starting at x equals to zero, that's an, we're going to start at an angle of zero, obviously. And if we go all the way up to two pi, well, that's going to land us at e to the i times four pi. So plugging two pi into here, you're going to get e to the i times four pi. And that's exactly two revolutions of the circle. So in fact, what's, hap what's actually happening is we are starting here you're doing one full rotation, that's going to get you up to pi only. And then to get up to two pi, you're going around a second time. So you're traversing this circle twice, and we can think about this a little bit differently. We can think about traversing the circle once, and then traversing it again. So instead of thinking about it going around twice, we can just multiply the contour integral around the circle C, by two because we're going around twice. So that's the same thing as going around just one of the circles. So just going around once, which is what C is, but then multiplying it by two. So we're going to get an extra two out the front over here. So that's basically what's going on with our contour integral. And this is um, C, I should probably write that it's a circle of radius one. I'll put it over here. So this is our contour C and we have a radius of exactly one. Because remember our radius over here, well, there's no radius, so it's assumed to be one. All right, so we have it in this form, we have some kinds of contour integral, and if we have a contour integral, we can use Cauchy's residue theorem. Um, if we can calculate the residues, then we can know what the, res we can know what the value of our contour is. So how do we calculate the residues? Well, we need to know where the poles of our function are. Luckily, this function will have poles because it's a one over a polynomial. We just have to figure out where those poles are. So 
In order to figure out what the poles of the function are, we need to solve for where the denominator is equal to zero. So we want to solve for where z squared minus 6z plus 1 is equal to zero, or just the roots of this quadratic. We can just simply use the quadratic formula. So z is equal to minus b, which is just 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 36, minus 4 times a times c. So that's just going to be minus 4. And this is divided by 2a which is 2. And we can simplify this down. Notice that 36 minus 4 is 32. And 32, we can think about it as a 16 times 2. So when you take the square root of this, you're going to get square root of 16 times square root of 2, but that's exactly 4 times root 2. So you're going to get 3 plus or minus. This whole thing, this um, third over here will be 4 times root 2, but notice we have 4 and a 2, that's going to cancel out, leaving us with 2 root 2. Okay, so we have 2 roots, obviously, because we are dealing with a quadratic, and now it's just a matter of picking which one to use, because we have to pick the one that lies inside of this contour, because Cauchy's residue theorem only cares about what poles lie inside of our contour. So if you look at the value of root 2, well, that's approximately 1.41, I think, something like that. And if you have a 2 times root 2, if you have a 2 times root 2, that's approximately 2.82, dot, dot, dot. So if you have 3 minus a 2 root 2, that's going to be roughly 1, 0.12. But if you have 3 plus 2 root 2, that's going to be something like 5.82. So obviously, if we take the positive branch over here, we're going to get a root that's outside or way outside of our contour. But if we take the negative branch, which is the one we're going to be choosing, we're going to land inside of the circle. And that's exactly what we want. So we know one of our poles of our function uh well, the pole we're going to be dealing with is z being equal to 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. And now we just have to apply Cauchy's residue theorem. So what we have over here, well, we have a minus 4 over i. So we'll write that down. So minus 4 over i. And then this integral becomes a 2 pi i. And since we have one pole inside of this contour, we're just going to be dealing with a run, one residue. So we have 2 pi i times the residue at z being equal to 3 minus 2 square root of 2 of our function f of z. And our function f of z is exactly this integrand. So we have 1 over z squared minus 6z plus 1. And notice this is a simple pole as well. Because if you have an nth degree polynomial and you have nth n distinct roots, and then each of those roots are simple poles um, or simple zeros, but because we're taking reciprocals, we're thinking about them as poles. So we can use the definition for the or the formula for the residues at simple poles. And also notice we have i's out here that will cancel each other out, and we can do some simplifications out here as well. So that's going to be minus 8 pi, and then we're going to have the limit as z approaches the pole, so as z approaches 3 minus 2 root 2 of, now we're going to have z minus the pole, so z minus 3 minus 2 square root of 2. And then we just multiply that by our function, which is 1 over z squared minus 6z plus 1. And notice one thing, 3 minus 2 root 2 is a solution to this quadratic down here, which means when you plug 3 minus 2 root 2 into this denominator, you're going to get 0. And take a look at the numerator over here as well. If you plug z being equal to 3 minus 2 root 2 into here, you're also going to get 0. So in fact, this numerator turns into a 0. This denominator also turns into a 0 because this complex or this number is um, a solution to this quadratic. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to get now minus eight pi limits as z approaches three minus two root two of, now differentiating the top, well, this is just a linear 
function with a leading coefficient of one. So the derivative of the numerator is just one. And the derivative of the denominator, that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 2z and then minus a 6. And let's see what we can do now. We can factor out a 2 if we want to. So we can factor out a 2. That's just going to leave us with z minus 3. And now we can just plug this z value into here. So taking the limit, nothing is going to blow up or go to 0 or anything like that. So we're just going to be left with minus 4 pi. So 8 over 2 is um, 4. And then taking the limit, well, we can just directly plug this in. So we're going to have 1 over. Now, 3 minus 2 root 2 minus another 3. Well, these 3s are going to cancel out, leaving us with minus 2 root 2. And well, we can simplify this yet again. These minuses will cancel each other out. This 4 and this 2 will cancel out each other out, leaving us with just a 2. And of course, again, this 2 and this square root of 2 will cancel each other out, leaving us with a square root of 2. And overall, we're going to get the final result of pi times the square root of 2. And that is the final result for today's integral. So quite a nice integral. Um, this is probably the first integral that I've evaluated that um, has a circle where you traverse it twice, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's pretty much the final answer for this integral. It's exactly pi times the square root of 2. And we didn't use any parameterizations. Well, not really. We didn't parameterize any paths in the complex plane. All we did was just residue theorem. So that's pretty much all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe for more complex analysis videos like this one. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye bye.